Hi guys, welcome back. In this week's video, I wanted to take a look at power supplies. In particular, the generic cheapo power supplies that we can get from AliExpress um, and other well-known online stores that deliver next day. And I wanted to put them up against the branded Mean Well type transformer or power supply that is quite common in the hobby, but is typically more expensive uh, than the cheap ones. What does paying that bit extra for a mean well mean to you? What peace of mind is it going to give to you over your typical Chinese unbranded PSU? Now back in my first year in the hobby about eight years ago, my first prop was a simple tree uh, run directly off the GPIO pins of a Raspberry Pi. But of course, following the first successful year, I wanted to expand. And so I bought my first proper controller, which was a Falcon F16 V3. And it was a significant investment. I wanted to make sure that it had good power to it because I wanted to protect that investment. And so I opted to run a pair of Meanwell RSP 3212s to drive it. And they've been brilliant. They've just worked straight through. I've never had any dramas with them whatsoever. Moving on, as I expanded into uh, running a retail store, which I did for about five years, I found that I had a few controllers returned to me. Now, they were from controllers from different vendors, but all based on the BBB, the BeagleBone Black. And every one of the half a dozen or so that came back to me as dead, even though they'd been tested before they were shipped out, all of them came back with a dead, the dreaded single blue flash on the BBB, indicating it had been subject to an over voltage situation and that had broken the BBB. And every time I quizzed the unfortunate recipient, it was a cheap PSU that was being run rather than a slightly more expensive Meanwell. So we've got a link here. Different customers all over the UK and they'd all suffered the same fate with various different cheap PSUs. So now we've moved into trying to teach people about it, I wanted to go through and have a look and see what the differences are and if we can establish what it is that's causing it. Now, under normal circumstances, I would break out my trusty multimeter and we would measure our voltages with the multimeter and away we go and we could see what was happening. But this isn't going to be fast enough to register things like spikes and activity like that on the output channels of the PSUs. So wanting to be more in depth and to get more data uh, across to you guys in the forthcoming videos, I've added a small oscilloscope to the kit that we're running here. Now our oscilloscope is pretty much a voltage meter, but it does it very quickly, so it does over 50,000 times per second, uh, 50 megahertz, uh, so 50 million times per second, and it records the results as a line graph on the screen. And we can zoom in and we can see exactly what is going on. So I used the oscilloscope to measure the outputs from both PSUs through a number of scenarios to see what happened. The first thing I did was to measure the output voltages at power on to see exactly what happened when we hit the go button. Now the cheap Chinese PSU came up right away, but it had a voltage spike right at the start and it peaked between the voltage low and the voltage high of 6.96 volts. And it actually settled um, with a maximum spike, uh, maximum voltage 
of 5.76. So it's had a blip, it's had a drop right before the power has come in. So it's given us uh, about a one volt drop on the output before it then cranked up to 5.76 volts. That's given us a, a, a low to a peak of 6.96 uh, volts. Now almost seven volts peak to peak is, is huge when you've got components that are rated for five volts. That's something like 40% greater voltage than they're designed for. And that is not going to be good for your controllers. I then tested the mean well with exactly the same scenario. And that came in at a beautiful maximum of five volts and a peak to peak of five volts. So there was no voltage drop before the power kicked in. It just came up in a far smoother curve, as you can see, uh, it came up in a far smoother curve up to five volts. Whereas this sort of charged into life with a massive roar and then settled down again. So meanwhile, definitely winning on the power in and power start. I then measured the two PSUs with no load. And as a switching power, as they're both switching power supplies. And as a result of that, you'd expect to see some ripple. And under no load, this one came in at about 5.16 volts, so fractionally high, with a ripple of about 160 millivolts. So not bad, fairly stable. The meanwhile was actually worse at this point, although it was peaking at a maximum of five volts dead, it had a ripple of about 440 millivolts. So this is actually slightly noisier uh, on the no load thing. Next up, I wanted to put them under a measured load. So I took four P5 panels and hooked them up to a color light card put them into all white on self-test, and that gives us around eight amps of load per panel. So I used four panels to give us 32 amps-ish of load, and measured the voltages on the power supplies. The cheap one was giving us a flicker of 360 millivolts whilst the switching was happening but it increased the output voltage to 5.24 volts. So the voltage increased from 5.16 up by 0.8 volts up to 5.24. The mean well, pretty stable from its 440 odd millivolt flicker that it had before, it increased slightly to 480 millivolt um, of flicker and the output power also increased uh, broadly in line with the cheap one actually at 5.08 volts. So under load, they were both working well. The final task that I wanted to complete was an overload task where I wanted to overload the power supplies to see what happened. First up was the Chinese PSU which is rated at 40 amps at five volts. So I hooked up six of the P5 panels and six, eight, 48, so about 20% overload. Hooked them up, put them on full white and the PSU attempted to supply the voltage. Where we'd had a voltage flicker of about 360 millivolts before, that jumped to a massive 1.8 volts with a peak of 5.4 volts. So the output voltage was flickering between 3.6 and 5.4 volts as it attempted to supply the load. That is bad, really bad. Your equipment, particularly if it's sensitive microelectronics like a controller, um, the BBB or a Raspberry Pi or similar is not going to take kindly to having voltages going up and down like crazy like that and something will go pop. Um, there's no two ways about it. 
I only risked a color light and some P5 panels. I would not risk a full controller. So that was not good. I then did the same with the Meanwell. Now the Meanwell is rated for 60 amps. So I hooked up 10 panels to that to see what would happen. Uh, 10 times eight is around 80 amps. And I could have probably gone with nine for 72 amps, but I went for 10 for 80 amps to see what happened. It went through the initial tests on the color lights just fine, the red, the green, the blue. As soon as I hit white and full power draw, the meanwhile turned off. It just went click and the power went. And within a couple of seconds of the power going, another click and the power came back on. But of course everything had reset so the panels were no longer drawing the, the amperage. So the meanwhile had done what it says on the tin, it had done an auto power down. And it will do that. If you overload it, it will shut down. Take the fault away, it comes back on again. So really good that. And it's not the first time I've seen that in action. Working on one of our commercial product projects, uh, I accidentally set the power brightness too high on a big string of pixels and they would go do the same thing. They go through red, green, blue, off. Red, green, blue, off. And the meanwhile was doing its thing. And they saved the day. I mean, if you've accidentally messed something up or something's gone wrong in your wiring and you've got a dead short, you don't want your power supply to continue chucking power at it and trying to break things when it's going to detect the issue and it will shut down automatically. So in conclusion, the Meanwells advertised themselves as having over voltage protection. And we saw that at the start, we had a nice gradual start and it came up to exactly five volts. Whereas this one had a big old spike before it settled down. They have overload protection. We saw that, I've stacked them up with too many panels and it turned itself off. This one attempted to keep going and very likely would have cooked things had we left it doing that. Over temperature protection, these things are rated at up to 70 degrees C and after that they'll shut down when they get too hot. And that's good peace of mind if you've got them in a sealed enclosure um, and it's unexpectedly warm. Not an issue we're going to have in the UK at Christmas because it's normally around freezing. So I generally keep all of my enclosures sealed. I've got no vents or anything and that way I can't get any moisture in there. And I know that they're going to keep themselves nice and warm. I haven't tested this one for over temperature, but I'm pretty sure it would just keep going. Is it worth spending the extra 15, 20 bucks on a good quality PSU versus the cheap one. For peace of mind, absolutely. If you want to risk it, I know I'm going to get the naysayers in the comments below that say, I've had one of these for 20 years and it's worked just fine for me. Well, good for you, but is it worth the risk? Pay cheap, put some money to one side to pay for something else in the, eventually that it fa in the eventuality that it fails, or use that money to buy something a little bit more capable and give you more peace of mind. Particularly if you're running expensive controllers, you don't want to blow up an F16 or a Colt 32 or something just because you scrimped out on the 10 bucks for a decent PSU. There you go, that's the ramblings from Greg this week. And I'm looking forward to getting more in depth on measuring things like the pixel data and stuff like that. We're gonna start introducing tests on what does an F amp do and what happens at the end of a long cable run and things like that that we can now monitor properly with this lovely scope. So keep, stay tuned for things like that. If you haven't liked, shared, subscribed, all that good stuff already, then please do so. And if you've got something that you'd like me to review or have a look at, 
reach out, I'll stick an email address down below and you can get in contact. Have a good week and we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy. Bye for now.